The first most unique account that we'll be looking at today is Jasper S. Jasper S is currently the lowest combat level in game with 99 Slayer, sitting at just 35 combat. His 35 combat is based around his 75 defense and 66 hit points. He remains 1 attack, 1 strength, 1 ranged, 1 magic, and 1 prayer. His Slayer method comes from an interesting mechanic that involves partner slaying. The method involves Jasper S using 3 total accounts, the account Jasper S, a ranger ult, and a magic ult. The method works like this. The ranger ult blowpipes the assigned slayer monster down until its hit points are less than 50%. Once the NPC is below 50%, Jasper S attacks simultaneously with both Jasper S and the mage ult on the same tick. Since melee has priority over magic, the Jasper S account gets the other half of the slayer experience, sharing it with the range ult. To go from 1 to 99 Slayer, Jasper S says it took around 1400 hours, and that doesn't even factor in time to make the alts and money making. He did spend around 600 mil on Slayer, mostly from Zalra skills for his blowpipe on the range alt, prayer potions for both alts, and runes for the trident on the mage alt. His rough Slayer experience rates are as follows. 1 to 69 was roughly 3 to 4k an hour, 69 to 73 was 7 to 8k per hour, and 83 to 99 average 10 to 11k experience per hour. Jasper S used a Berserker Necklace, Flowers, and an Odium Ward when slaying. All these items give negative attack bonuses, which allowed him to hit constant zeros, preventing him from getting any combat experience, and thus keeping his combat level at 35. On top of 99 Slayer, Jasper S has also achieved all non-combat skills to 99. He even has 200 mil cooking experience. Jasper S has completed over 900 clues on his account, including over 500 easy clues and 400 medium clues. He has completed over 6,000 high gambles on all three of his accounts combined, with the Penance Queen on all of them as well. His future goals include getting all Castle Wars items, the Caliphate Slayer Helm, and one PVM pet. Next on our countdown is the player Hit for a 9. Hit for a 9 is the first and believed to be the only 10 HP hardcore Iron Man account to have the untrimmed prayer cape. Hit for a 9 did a birthday stream getting 99 prayer and rank 1 prayer on the same day, which he says was by far his biggest accomplishment on his account to date. His method involves grinding out pest control, over a thousand hours to be exact. This took him roughly a 6 month period, 5 months to save the points for 99, and an additional month to store the points for rank 1. Some of Hit for a 9's other accomplishments on the account include successfully questing Dragon Slayer, achieving a Fighter Torque Stow, completing two Champion Scrolls, buying 100,000 Cosmic Runes from the Rune Store and Mage Bank, which must have been pretty intense getting there, and also doing a thousand laps at the Agility Pyramid for his cash. What's also interesting is that while he was doing the thousand laps for his GP, he got hit by the Desert Heat twice. If you don't know, the Desert Heat has the ability to one-hit 10 HP accounts. Luckily for him, the Desert Heat only hit him a 1 and a 5 in those two instances. Hit for a 9 has not only chanced his account twice in the desert, he also chanced it while running through Hellhounds while charging water orbs. At one point while world hopping, he forgot to put his protect melee prayer on and got hit for a 9 and got ring of lifed out. I guess that's where his name comes from. Today, hit for a 9 still is currently sitting at rank 2 prayer for hardcores with over 17.8 million experience. He's roughly 1.5 mil behind the player next, whose hardcore account has has fallen. F to pay our respects to him. The rank 1 spot is up for grabs, and we'll see if it for a 9 can get it back. Next on our countdown is the player Power Creep. Power Creep is believed to be the lowest combat level with the original four colored Slayer helmets. He is just 69 combat. His stats include 16 attack, 99 strength, and 13 defense, with 76 range, 43 prayer, 75 magic, and 90 hit points. With only 16 attack, his quickest way of getting the full totem, which unlocks Skatizo, was killing the hill giants inside the catacombs of Karen. At 16 attack, each full totem took roughly 11 hours. Power Creep ended up getting the Dark Claw attachment at just 9 kill count, so the Purple Slayer helmet was completed in just 100 short hours. He also ended up getting the pet Skotos at 21 kill count. His next goal was the Green Slayer Helmet, which requires the Caliphate Head Attachment. The Caliphate Head is one of the most complained about tasks in Achievement Diaries as it's RNG related. As you could have guessed, Power Creep got the Caliphate Head at just 9 kill count. Man, I got mine sub 100 on Mac H, and I thought I was lucky. 
The third Slayer Helm power creep got was the Black Slayer Helmet, achieved by adding the Black Dragon head attachment to it. This is a 1 in 128 boss drop from the King Black Dragon, and he got it at 81 kill count. The fourth and final Slayer Helmet he had to get was the Red Slayer Helmet. This is definitely the hardest Slayer Helmet to get of the original four. It's a 1 in 1280 drop rate from the Abyssal Sire, or a 1 in 6000 drop rate from Abyssal Demons. Power Creep decided to start with the Sire, but that was relatively short lived as he got the pet on his third unsired at 308 kill count. After getting the pet, Power Creep decided to switch to Partner Slayer with his main. Using Partner Slayer, he was able to get the Abyssal Head at 2000. 894 kill count. As a fun fact, Power Creep also has the Kraken Pet receiving it on his first kill. Also making episode 1 of the most unique account, season 2, is the account Asylum. Asylum is currently the only old school runescape account that is maxed with one prayer. He is 2,179 total level and has 419 million total experience. And he's not just one prayer, he's one prayer with zero experience. That means he's never even accidentally buried a bone on the account's history. Although I've seen accounts that have 2,197 total level with a level 1 skill before, none of them have truly stacked up to Asylums. One of the main reasons why is with one prayer, Asylum is really limited to where he can go in RuneScape. One of the big areas that is off limits is Swampletic's territory, Mortania. Since Priest and Peril gives prayer experience as well as it requires subquests that also give prayer experience, it is simply not possible for Asylum to enter these parts of Gilinor. The max quest points on Asylum's account is 196, which means he's missing a fair amount of quests still. Asylum currently has 6 pets, and they include 5 skilling pets, the Beaver, Huron, Tangle Root, Rift Guardian, and the Giant giant squirrel, as well as one PVM pet, the pet smoke devil. With one prayer, Asylum also has really limited his PVM capabilities. He can't use overheads at any bosses, which makes them significantly harder. He also can't use piety, rigor, or augury. With these limitations, Asylum has somehow achieved the primordial crystal, Zenite shard, all of the jars from Kraken, Zara, the Calva Queen, and Cerberus, as well as completing Mage Arena 2. His next big goal is to complete Jad and achieve the fire cape on this unique build. He's currently doing runs with tick eating manipulation methods so hopefully timing and RNG go in his favor and he can successfully get that fire cape. The last unique account for season 2 episode number 1 that I want to feature is the account Chespra is currently the lowest combat level in the 1750 worlds, sitting at just 34 combat. His stats include 1 attack, 60 strength, 1 defense, 42 ranged, 43 prayer, 40 magic, and 35 hit points. The account Chespra was inspired in 2014 by his close friend and YouTuber Rendimento. When Chespra met Rendimento, the account Chespra wasn't even created yet. Instead, Chespra was playing on his level 43 fire cape account. After seeing Rendimento have a fire cape in the mid 30s, Chespra was inspired and the account Chespra was born. He learned all of Rendimento's techniques and Chespra was eventually able to achieve the fire cape at 34 combat. Chespra has all non-combat 99s, including 86 million woodcutting experience, 54 million fire making experience, 43 million cooking experience, 22 million thieving experience, 20 mil fishing experience, and also 20 mil farming experience. Chespra has 8 of 10 scaling pets, including the baby Chinchampa, Beaver, Huron, Rock Golem, Rocky, Tango Root, Irby, and the pet Phoenix. He's He's only missing the giant squirrel and the rift guardian. Of the skilling pets, Chespra says that the beaver was one of his true achievements on his account as he was 80 million woodcutting experience dry before getting it. Chespra has also done over 3000 clue scrolls altogether on his account, with the majority of them being easy clues. Although all of his achievements are extremely unique, Chespra's biggest achievement to date is the Corporal Beast Pet, achieved at just 2 kill count. You may be asking, Mac H, how is it possible for a level 34 to get a Corporal Beast kill? The Credit goes to the player Zarge, who I featured in Season 1. The method involves using Dragon Warhammer specs on mains until the Corp Beast's defense level is drained to 1. From there, the mains use Vengeant to get the hit points of the Corporal Beast down before dealing 1 damage on the desired account that you want to kill on, which in this case was Chespra. Before Chespra dealt the 1 damage, he had to brew his strength down to 1 to ensure that he didn't get too much experience for getting the hit. The whole process took around 1 hour per kill, so a total of 2 hours. Overall, having the lowest combat level on the 1750 worlds is probably a pretty cool feeling, but being able to have a fire cape on your back as well as a corporal beast following you is just the icing on the cake.
Starting off Season 2, Episode number 2 is the account 1100 Hours. 1100 Hours is thought to be the first and only 10 HP Hardcore Iron Man account with 99 strength sitting at the lowest combat level possible with such a feat at just 35. A combination of inspiration from Kemp Q and constantly getting cleaned out at the Duel Arena, this account 1100 Hours was born. The account 1100 Hours' name is derived from the amount of time it took him to get 99 strength, which yes, was 1100 Hours. That statistic is based off of 12 K strength experience per hour, which equates to roughly 1100 hours to 99. 1100 Hours' method involves strength pumping at the Blast Furnace. I get this question all the time on both of my 10 HP series, so let me explain how it works. Basically, upon starting the quest of the Giant Dwarf, you have access to the city of Keldegrim. On Keldegrim's east side, you will see a furnace on your minimap. Most people do indeed come here for smithing, and there are official smithing worlds for that. Around 6 months ago, however, World 319 was organized as the unofficial strength pumping world for low level peers. Upon perfect conditions, meaning no crashers, you can get 2 strength XP per tick, which equates to 12k strength experience per hour. Besides one person who has to refill the coke which fuels the furnace, it is completely AFK. So yes, 1100 hours literally spent and 1100 hours AFKing this. Within the past two weeks or so, there has been many players using autotypers to stay logged in here. To me, this is a growing concern in game. Although everyone's opinions are different, I interpret this as a form of botting. Although it is not as bad as auto-clicking magic or anything like that, both concepts remain the same, using an auto-clicker or auto-typer to help you level a skill. And yes, plenty of people have been banned for auto-clicking magic, so hopefully the ban hammer comes soon to these auto-typers here as well. It is clear what players are auto-typing, as they are the ones who are spamming dots and weird song lyrics over and over again in public chat. In the meantime, I did request full 30 to 99 strength pictures from 1100 hours' as runelight folder to check the legitimacy of his achievement. I can confirm it is legitimate by how spread out the dates of his strength levels are, as well as some of his later level-up pictures even coming from RuneScape Mobile. Next on our countdown is the player Goose. Okay, before I explain this account, let me ask you guys this. Have you ever seen those skilling accounts with 15 combat and 99 prayer? Well, this is Goose's account build, but his is a little bit different. Goose isn't a standard account, but instead an ultimate Iron Man. That's right, 15 combat, 99 prayer on an ultimate Iron Man account. Faced with not being able to use pest control since he wasn't 40 combat, Goose had to get creative doing prayer. He achieved level 1 to 43 prayer at the Boneyard just Burying bones at 5k experience per hour. Ouch. Level 43 prayer took over 10 hours alone. At 43 prayer, Goose realized that 5k experience per hour to 99 was going to be hell. He decided to try a method involving hunting dragon implings for a chance at getting dragon bones. He was successful some of the time and did this from 43 to 61 prayer. At 61 prayer, he decided that this probably was slower than the boneyard and he put back on his thinking cap. From 61 to 72 prayer, he used the mycelium pool. Sorry if I said that wrong, on False Island. Again, Goose was obviously getting really creative at this point because I've straight up never even heard of this method before. Goose said that the amount of raw materials needed didn't make this method doable long term. At 72 prayer, Goose decided he was gonna go back to the Boneyard, but this time he had a different plan. He wasn't going to be doing it 5k experience per hour like he did from 1 to 43 prayer. Goose found a method that involved looting the big bones at the graveyard and then going to the level 38 chaos temple by using the wieldy obelisk. This was a good idea because the Chaos Temple gives the same prayer bonus as the Gilded Altar with two burners lit. It also gives a 50% chance that the bone you're sacrificing is saved. This method was about 15k prayer experience per hour and Goobs did this all the way to 99 prayer. This comes out to about 800 hours from 72 to 99. To understand the context of how rare his achievement is, we can just look at what the competition is doing. The next UAM skiller is Commandment 6 who is only 85 prayer which is truly light years away from Goose's 99. Since achieving 99 prayer, Goose has also captured the top prayer page for Ultimate Iron Man accounts, so congrats to him. One of the longest overdue accounts to be showcased on the series is the account Steph's Tank. Steph's Tank is currently one of the lowest combat levels in game with 99 Slayer, sitting at just 49 combat. After getting involved with the defense peer community, Steph's Tank quickly found out that 99 Slayer had not yet been achieved and decided he wanted to be the first one to tackle the unknown. From 1 to 83 Slayer, his Slayer method was pretty straightforward and it just involved tanking hits and using a Serpentine Helm to poison the NPCs. At 83 Slayer, however, this method was patched, and that's where a better understanding of the Slayer mechanics came in. 
Batman. I explained the exact mechanics in the last episode featuring Jasper S, so if you're interested in the exact mechanics that Steph's tank used, be sure to check out that episode. But basically to summarize, it used partner slang. Anyways, from 83 to 99 Slayer, his Slayer experience was about 15k per hour, which roughly comes out to 700 hours to 99. Coldfingers3 is the first free to play account that I want to feature for season 2. He is the only Iron Man to 126 combat playing strictly on free to play worlds. What makes this even more unique is that he's not just an Iron Man, but actually a hardcore Iron Man. After being bored at work, he came across Old Score RuneScape and decided the hardcore Iron Man challenge would be the best fit for him so he didn't run out of things to do while working. Most of his gameplay early on came from work only. He told me though he eventually started playing at home, and when he he did this he started making huge gains quickly. His first 4 months playing on the account he did all 99 melees using a rune sword and strength amulet killing moss giants. After maxing his melees he headed to the boneyard where he would spend the next full month burying bones to 98 prayer. His method was much more complex than Guz's as it involved making sure he saved ticks by integrating running to the next bone spawn and burying at the same time. He also constantly world hopped to make sure that he could maximize experience per hour. His method allowed for perfect hours to be 9500 experience per hour, from 90 to 98 prayer which got him from 125 to 126 combat, it took Cold Fingers 3 roughly another 3 months. To date the next closest person to 126 combat only sits at 91 prayer which is just about halfway to 98. Cold Fingers 3 future goals include going for max and then eventually PKing with this hardcore status on the line. He currently just has 1 prayer level remaining and then just smithing and runecrafting to go. To give some context how hard it is to max on a free to play Iron Man account, consider this. His 99 crafting method took him a thousand hours alone doing silver tiaras. To date, Cold Fingers 3 has 5,100 efficient hours played on this account. The last account I want to feature for this episode, and also the first Snowflake Iron Man to make its way to Season 2, is YouTuber Rendy's account, Potato Only. Potato Only was a 10 HP hardcore Iron Man account that was restricted in a way where it could only eat the lowest food on the food chain in old score RuneScape, raw potatoes. For those unaware, raw potatoes heal only one hit point. Combined with 10 HP and hardcore Iron Man status, this account seemed to be doomed from the start. The goal was to complete as many quests as possible, without dying of course. With this series, Rendy proved once again that he is among the best players in the game in terms of knowing old school RuneScape's game mechanics and the fine details of each area of Gilinor. In the 6 episodes of this series, Potato only went on to complete some insanely hard quests for the account build, including Underground Pass, Fight Arena, Tree Gnome Village, The Grand Tree, and his biggest accomplishment, Monkey Madness. That's right, he completed Monkey Madness at only 16 combat, 1 prayer, and 10 hit points. To truly understand how unique this is and the complexities involved, you simply have to watch the video. The link to that will be in the description. I personally think that this may be the video of the year. Obviously Settled is going to win YouTuber of the year, but this video might be the video of the year. It's definitely worth the watch, like I said, link in the description.
Starting off Season 2, Episode number 3 of Old School RuneScape's most unique accounts is the player You Got Dropped. You Got Dropped is the first and still the only player in Old School RuneScape to completely max a free-to-play 40 attack peer. Just like many new players to RuneScape, You Got Dropped started as a free-to-play account. He did some research and found out that one of the best money-making methods in free-to-play was woodcutting you logs. He got 60 woodcutting through willow trees and then went to yew trees. From 60 to 99 woodcutting, the yew trees in the free-to-play worlds was his home. He said it took hundreds of hours and several months for the rune axe to get to 99, but when he was done, he had plenty of money for a bond and decided to go to the members' worlds. As a member, you got drop accomplished several achievements including 200 mil hunter, 200 mil smithing, and 99 slayer. For 200 mil hunter, he cut black chinchampas in the 2000 total level worlds. The biggest problem he faced, other than the crazy amount of hours to reach 200 mil of course, was the PKers. Since he had one defense and no overhead prayers, surviving max mad accounts was rather difficult. You got dropped was able to escape most of the time by using Cerdom and Bruise and also running two Hobgoblins since they aggroed the PKers off him. For You Got Dropped's 200 mil smithing, he did Rune Two Hand Swords for his first 180 million experience and then finished at Blast Furnace doing Gold Doors for his last 20 mil. You Got Dropped's 99 Slayer was very unorthodox, making it another big accomplishment on his build. Since he was 76 combat, he was only able to use Shell Dark. Most of his tasks involved low piping and cannoning, but again, with one defense and no overhead prayers. To make matters worse, when You Got Dropped became a member, he was already 31 prayer. Not wanting to ruin his free to play build, he was faced with not being able to get Ava's accumulator as that gave prayer experience. And with getting over 40 million ranged experience on his way to 99 Slayer, it hurts just to think about how much in lost ammo he had along the way. He also only could get around 50 quest points without ruining his build, so that just left him with one block task, which was extremely inefficient on his journey. Overall, as an OG free to play PKer myself, I can't help but to have the utmost respect for this guy to not ruin his build and accomplish everything that he has thus far. Next on our countdown is the player Anka. Anka is one of the best normal 10 HP accounts in Old Score RuneScape. He boasts of 75 attack, 1 strength, 1 defense, and 1 prayer, with 99 range and magic, sitting at just 50 combat. His account build is almost maxed, with the exception of 90 Herbler. Come on bro, just hit that bull a little bit more. Outside of the defense tanks, Anka is the lowest combat level with the Slayer Cape in game, sharing that feat with another player called Burn and Fury. Getting 99 Slayer on a 10 HP account takes over a thousand hours. Faced with not getting overhead prayers, Anka's account was a liability in the wilderness, being prone to getting one hit at any time by PKers or NPCs. Being one of the lowest combat levels in the 1750 total level worlds allowed him to avoid many PKers in his combat bracket, but spending a thousand hours doing Wilderness Slayer was still risky business. For some context, Wilderness Slayer and a 10 HP account averages at about 10k experience per hour. Since quest points are limited to these builds, it is vital to strategically choose block tasks. Revenants are always priority as the first block task on an account like this. These tasks are awful because you have to lure revenants to your cannon. On top of that, PKers are thirsty for your blood. Other common block tasks for 10 HP accounts include Anku Earth Warriors and Ice Warriors. Anka's short term goals include finishing 99 Herbler to max his build and also getting 50 mil thieving experience. Long term goals include getting all skilling pets, the Mole and Chaos Ellie pet, as well as 20 mil base stats. Overall, well done Anka, make sure to let me know when you max so I can share it in a future episode. The third player we'll be featuring this episode is the player I Love Kaylee. I Love Kaylee is 111 combat with 24 total pets. What's interesting about his 24 pets is his build. He's 55 attack, 99 strength, 99 defense, 99 range, 99 magic, 99 prayer, and 99 hit points. You may be asking why would he possibly stay at 55 attack if he's going for all pets? The answer can be understood by looking back at I Love Kaylee's roots. Free to play PKing. I Love Kaylee is a huge free to play PKer, boasting of a 448 million and tab from free to play PKing alone on his journey to PKing all rune heraldic helm types. But then in August of 2015, everything changed. The Cerberus boss was giving a rare chance of dropping a pet known as the Hell Puppy, and I Love Kaylee wanted it badly. So he decided he wanted to become a member, but he was faced with the dilemma. He loved free to play PKing and worked so hard on his account, yet he had to quest to be able to unlock many areas that members had to offer. He decided to go forward with questing while trying to keep his attack level as low as possible. In the process, he went from 4 
40 to 55 attack, but also was able to do just about every quest that gave attack experience, such as the Tree Gnome Village, the Grand Tree, Monkey Madness, and the Night's Waves Training Grounds mini quest. To this day, his biggest pet achievements include Vedion and the Calfi Queen Pet. The reason why there are such big achievements is because he got them using an ancient staff as a melee weapon. For both Vedion and the Calfi Queen, the ideal strategy is using a Bludgeon, which has plus 102 crush bonus and plus 85 strength bonus. On the contrary, the Ancient Staff, which he used, only has plus 40 crush and plus 50 strength bonus, which, as you can see, is quite different. Overall, great accomplishment. I love Kaylee. Thank you so much for the submission on my Discord channel. Our next submission was also a Discord submission coming by the name of Mad Caleb. Can we fasten our seatbelts for this submission, please? Mad Caleb was the 11th player in Old School RuneScape to accomplish the untrimmed Slayer Cape, but what is unique about this was how he accomplished it. On his way to getting this untrimmed cape, he hoarded every drop worth over 100 GP, and he didn't sell any of them until he reached 99 Slayer. Let's take a look at his final tap. Well that was very impressive and certainly unique as well, but it gets even better. On his journey from 1 to 99 Slayer, Mad Caleb did every clue scroll he received. But when he got a clue scroll drop, he didn't just wait to the end of his task to do it. He stopped the task, did the clue scroll, and went back to the task. This method truly meant that he was maximizing his GP gained while doing Slayer on his journey from 1 to 99. But now it gets better than even before. Today, Mad Caleb is going for all boss pets, and again, hoarding every single drop and doing every single clue in the process. He's currently made over 1.2 billion GP from his pet and clue scroll tabs combined. And if just for one second you didn't think it could have gotten any better, well it does. To top it all off, this legend has even found love on RuneScape, meeting his IRL girlfriend through the game. They've been together for 7 years, and apparently she has a better account than him. She's maxed. The last player I'd like to feature in this episode is, surprise surprise, Rendy Mento's 18 Combat Fire Cape account, Rendy vs Jad. Rendy Mento, the popular YouTuber with over 30,000 subscribers, successfully beat his old Fire Cape record by 7 combat levels on this account to capture yet another world record Fire Cape in old school RuneScape. The entire accolade, including the strategy, its execution, and then the video editing, was absolutely superb and probably a winner of Jagex's 2019 Golden Gnome Award as Video of the Year. The the entire video can be found in episode number 3 of his Lower the Better series. Although I don't want to spoil the entire video, I did want to touch upon some key points. For starters, Renny vs Chad completed the Fire Cape at 26 attack, 14 ranged, 14 magic, 43 prayer, and just 17 hit points. The primary method involved flinching each NPC with the Mithril Dagger P++ and letting the poison kill it. He had to repoison all the 360s twice due to them having higher hit points than the other NPCs in the caves. Sometimes he had to repoison them a third time as they would regenerate their hit points before he could land another hit on them. He also used Bronze Bolts P++ to hit NPCs that were too far away. Way. The entire cave completion took Rendy 100 hours to complete. At any time in those 100 hours, Rendy could have lagged and missed a prayer flick, resulting in instantly getting KO'd. On top of that, Rendy could have also just simply messed up, as human error can be a major factor in a 100 hour cape attempt. Starting off the most unique accounts, episode number 4 is the player Chi Chi. Chi Chi is currently an Abi Mauler peer with 186 1, 13 prayer, and 71 hit points. He's currently tied for the lowest level account with a Champion's Cape, sitting at just 47 combat. For those unaware, the Champion's Cape is available to players after defeating all 10 champions in the Champion's Challenge. Each champion can be fought by sacrificing its designated champion scroll, a 1 in 5,000 drop rate from its respective NPC. The 10 NPCs include the Imp, Goblin, Skeleton, Zombie, Giant, Hobgoblin, Goal, 
Earth Warrior, Jorg, and Lesser Demon. What's interesting about this particular unique account was that being the lowest level was more of an accident rather than intended. While Chi Chi's method involved using an alt to get down a portion of the NPC's HP, then finishing the majority of the kill on Chi Chi, the reason why he did it this way was to save time and make the grind go quicker. For the Jorg and Lesser Demon scrolls, he also used Venom on his alt to speed up the process even more. Throughout the whole grind, in no way was he trying to get the lowest level champion's cape or he never would have done things like barbarian fishing to get 99 fishing which got him a ton of unnecessary strength experience and combat levels in the process. Due to his combat level a lot of people assumed he got really lucky with his RNG getting the champion scrolls. He says he maybe had just above average RNG but with this strategy of having to only kill just over half of each NPC it really did spare almost double the experience he would have got had he had done the whole kill on Chi Chi versus his alt. In total, the champion's cape ended up taking him approximately 300 hours. Chi Chi is also one of the lowest levels on the 1750 total level worlds, again, just at 47 combat. He's got 1099s and also 3 pets, including the Rock Golem, Beaver Pet, and Chaos Ellie Pet. He's also been lucky enough to get the Golden Tench, a 1 in 20,000 drop rate from aerial fishing at Lake Mulch. Sick account man, and best of luck finishing up those remaining non-combat nights. Next on our countdown is a popular streamer, Exact. Roughly 5 months ago, after months of theory crafting and attempts, Exact achieved the Infernal Cape at level 50 combat, breaking the record for the lowest combat level account to have completed the Infernal. The prior record holder, Adwam, who was featured in Season 1, was 57 combat. With the username sub to Adwam, he pays tribute to the legend himself, who Exact credits as the inspiration to pursue this goal. Then, 4 months later, which was last month, Exact beat his own record again, this time at 46 combat with the username 9640. And no, I can't tell you the significance of this username. In total, each of these infernal completions took over 9 hours each, with the final boss Zuck taking over an hour alone. These infernal cape completions were a combination of dozens of strategies, all combined into two successful runs on the 50 combat and 46 combat capes, respectively. At any time during the Zuck fight, or really during the entire attempt, one mistake or missed prayer could mean the end of the run. What makes the matter worse is after a handful of fails, Exact literally has to scrap the account because it's too high of combat and start a new account from scratch. Since his 50 and 46 combat infernal cape completions, Exact has created a stellar infernal guide which contains a variety of strategies that provide a path to anyone who wants to get an infernal cape. I'll leave a link to that video in the description. Next on our countdown is the player NoQP by the way. NoQP by the way is a Snowflake Iron Man account that as you guessed it, isn't allowed to do any quests in Old School RuneScape. After Morning Zen Part 2 got the best of him on his Hardcore Iron Man account, his hatred for quests inspired him to create the NoQP by the way account with the sole purpose to never do quests anymore. Since quests are a huge component of the game as they unlock new armor, weapons, and different areas around Gilinor and Zaya, the idea of avoiding quests seems counterintuitive. But after hours of doing research on what the account's limitations would be, as well as what the gameplay style would actually look like, such as where to get potions, how to train early stats since questing is typically the common route, and the account's end goals, no QP by the way figured the account could be extremely enjoyable and rewarding. So far, he's accomplished an untrimmed 99 attack cape and is over 1800 total level. He's getting closer to his second 99 on the account, sitting at 98 hit points. He's also achieved the Chaos Elemental and Kraken Pets. Some very good drops he's received include the Dragon Pickaxe, a Dark Foe from the Catacombs of Karend, All Ox Jewelry, including the Amulet of Fury, Berserker Necklace, Region Bracelet, and the Ring of Stone. One of No QP, by the way's biggest achievements to date is the coveted Fire. Fire Cape, what is a relatively simple achievement on any account that is allowed to do quests. An account without the ability of doing them is a different story. Since he can't train Herbler, the Druidic Ritual quest starts that skill, he had to formulate a strategy to get prayer potions. The best option he developed was grinding 72 Slayer for 6 months, which unlocks Skeletal Wyverns. Skeletal Wyverns uncommonly drop 2 prayer potion 4s. Only 3000 Skeletal Wyverns later, and no QP by the way was ready to tackle the Fire Cape 
only with a full inventory of food and prayer potions, rather than the typical ranged pots, serodome and brews, and super restore setup. And maybe just a little bit more pressure because, well, if he failed, then he's going to have to go back to skeletal wyverns for another 3,000 kills. All in all, the account's limitations are insane and definitely worthy of a feature. No QP, by the way, his future short-term goals include getting raids drops in 99 ranged for the free Ava's Accumulator range cape perk. His long-term goal is to completely max the account with obviously keeping his limitations in mind. No QP, by the way, is a YouTuber, so if you are interested in learning more about his account or watching his series, the link to that is down below in the description. Next on our countdown is the player Berserker. Berserker is among the most perfect accounts I think I've ever seen in old school RuneScape. For starters, wow, what an unreal name. How do you get a name like that? I've always wondered that. Anyways, he's a completely max 75 attack Zerker peer with 2,155 total level and over 750 million total experience. He's got 176 million range experience, 106 million hit points experience, 70 million strength experience, and over 48 million slayer experience. Damn! 48 million slayer experience on a 45 defense account? I promise you, you do not see that every day. Berserker is an unbelievable PVMer boasting of the ability of doing solo raids on his peer. He's over 625 raids kill count and has soloed multiple dragon hunter crossbows, multiple dexterous prayer scrolls, the dragon claws, and even, well, you guessed it, the famous coveted twisted bow. If that isn't enough to convince you that this account is a real deal, how about the fact that he soloed over 11k Zami God Wars kills for the pet? Oh, and he made a measly 700 mil in the process, including his 400 mil tab shown here, which was included in his final 6500 kills or so. Now that the pet discussion is out of the bag, here's the real kicker on this account. He has 33 of 45 pets at just 45 defense. That's absolutely incredible. Berserker started his pet hunting back in 2015 with the Calphite Queen pet. This was the pre-Dragon Warhammer days and also the pre-Berserker days when he was just named Google's PKer. Literally, man, Google hired him to PK noobs, dude. I can't make this shit up. Look at his name. Real talk, though. 30 Dragon Chain Bodies, 222 Magic Seeds, over 7k magic logs? Holy hell, if that didn't inspire him to do other pets, I don't know what would. Berserker's future goals include finishing the remaining 11 pets. Although there's 45 pets, he can only technically get 44 of them, since the Chompy requires Western Province's diaries, which in turn requires 100 combat. The final player that will be featured in episode number 4 is the player B5. B5 was the first level 3 skiller to reach level 80 slayer and currently sits rank 1 for slayer amongst all level 3 accounts with 81 slayer. B5 has been involved in the level 3 skilling scene since 2011. He likes the level 3 build as it's the most limited kind of build in game. It's always offering new challenges that are fun for him to take on. B5 has achieved the slayer levels through partner slaying. Partner slaying allows players like B5 to essentially overcome the 100 combat requirement to use Duradel. By using an alternate account that is over 100 combat, B5 can get high weighted tasks such as Black Demons. Once he has a particular task, his slayer method involves using the alternate account to venom the monsters down to almost no health before quickly hitting a zero with flowers on B5. This will grant both accounts half the slayer experience for that monster. B5 uses flowers, flippers, and a berserker necklace which gets him down to negative 60 to crush bonus. This gives him a 0.07% chance to actually hit the monsters. If he was negative 64 crush bonus, he wouldn't hit monsters at all, but unfortunately at negative 62, he is gaining marginal combat experience. B5 has calculated everything out, and the day he hits 99 Slayer, he should still be level 3 combat and level 1 in all melee stats. He thinks he can get up to 18 million Slayer experience before getting level 2 in a melee stat. He did say though, however, that if his RNG isn't in his favor, and he hits too many ones along this journey, he has an alternate method that doesn't gain him combat experience at all. However, this method is slower and more tedious than the method he's currently using, which comes out to 8k slayer experience per hour. Other than having the highest slayer level for level 3 combat
private account, B5 also has a KSLE pet. It took him 407 kill count and he averaged about 7 kills per hour in the process. He's also successfully killed the Corporal Beast, Calphite Queen, and King Black Dragon as well on his account. B5's long term goal is to become the first player to truly max a level 3 account, which comes out to 1600 total level. He also wants to get more pets of course and is currently working on the mole pet. Starting off the countdown of the most unique accounts, episode number 5 is the player Shawnee. Shawnee is a well-known PKer within the community who made a 1 defense hardcore Iron Man account several years ago after PKing started going downhill. This new account he created was an attempt to complete top tier PVM challenges as a 1 defense hardcore Iron Man account, with also the upside of being able to PK with it if he ever did die and lose his hardcore status. As a hardcore account, Shawnee was able to complete all of the Zara drops without the pet and mutagens at 442 kill count. This of course was done at 1 defense and also without the Western Provinces Diary completion, which rewards a player with 1 free resurrection per day if you die at Zara. As a hardcore Iron Man 1 defense peer, Shawnee was also able to get his hands on the Jad pet at 4 kill count. Then things briefly turned south for Shawnee when he lost his hardcore status by dying to Baron Spectres because he forgot his nose peg. Rip. But let me tell you, once this happened, things started to actually turn for the better. Today, as a regular 1 defense Iron Man peer now, Shawnee sits at 60, 98, 1 with 99 range and magic. He doesn't care much about skilling, but he does have 1853 total level. Okay, and now let's get into the uniqueness of this account. The first pretty unique thing on this account is he's achieved an ACB at 298 kill count from Commander Zoyana. Shawnee said it was 10 to 15 kills per trip since he was 1 defense, which actually isn't that bad, but the ACB on Locked other content, aka the Infernal Cape, which brings in some more uniqueness. With the ACB in hand, Shawnee was able to become the first one defense Iron Man peer to complete the Infernal without a twisted bow. And as a reward for the first completion, he was blessed by the RNG gods and given the pet nibbler slash Zuck pet at just one kill count. Shawnee has also achieved the Lil Zick pet from Raids 2 at just 28 kill count. And 15 kills later at 43 kill count, he received the Sang Staff. The Sang Staff was monumental for his account because it allowed him to completely skip Slayer as he doesn't need the Trident of the Seas anymore. Other RNG moments on this account include the Third Age Mage Hat at 17 hard clue scroll completions and also has both the Fishing and Mining pets receiving them at 82 Fishing and 83 Mining respectively. Overall, here's my advice you guys, just stop PKing and Jagex will reward you apparently. Next on our countdown is the player Scotty. Scotty is a completely maxed account and currently ranked 277 in old score runescape with over 1.2 billion total experience. More importantly, Scotty was the third player to achieve all 45 pets in old school. He also has achieved the Metamorphic Dust, a 1 in 400 drop in challenge mode raids, which is considered by some as half of a pet, making him the second player to all pets in Dust. And for those unaware, the Metamorphic Dust allows players to metamorphosize their omelet pet to other chamber of Zarek bosses. His 45 pets included achieving the final 8 pets in a span of just 2 weeks, from pet number 38 which was the general guard art on August 12th, to pet number 45 the penance queen on August 25th. For those of you not familiar with pets in old score runescape, they're typically dropped through bossing or skilling. The boss pets usually range from a 1 in 2000 to a 1 in 5000 drop rate. There's also quite a few skilling pets obtained by doing particular skills, your skill level plays a factor in the drop rate, with the higher the skill level, the greater your chance of receiving a pet. And then there are some other miscellaneous pets that I haven't mentioned, through things like quests or minigames. Scotty is also the rank 1 player in the completionist clan Totus, he's at 90,000 of 100,000 total points, with only 2 tasks left to accomplish. The first is achieving the 1500 and 2000 theater of blood kill count capes, which should be relatively easy for him. The second, however, is completely maxing all skills to 200 mil to unlock fake experience drops, which Scotty has told me he has absolutely no interest in doing, and I respect that. Scotty was also the first player to hit the 2000 challenge mode kill count, unlocking the Xerix champion cape in the process. Overall, Scotty's account is the dream, and Scotty doesn't even know.
Next on our countdown is the player UIM Snowflake from the clan Sue Generous, a clan for unique account builds. Link to that in the description. UIM Snowflake is one of the first 10 HP Ultimate Iron Man accounts I've ever seen. After getting bored of playing his main account, as he mentioned everything revolved around the best money making methods, best training methods, and best gear, he decided it was time to search for a new account build. That's when he found Iron Seaball on YouTube who was a 10 HP Ultimate Iron Man account. Iron Seaball inspired him to create his own 10 HP Ultimate Iron Man account and he's been addicted ever since. UIM Snowflake's currently 85 combat, 18 1867 total level and has completed 892 clue scrolls, including 652 easy clues and 235 medium clues. He has 499s including hunter, woodcutting, fire making, and strength, and he has specifically told me that strength was one of his best achievements to date as he did it by pumping at 12k experience per hour, which comes out to roughly 1100 hours to 99. He also has achieved the chaos elemental pet at 3 kill count. Since he can't bank, there's far more strategy involved. He had to focus on trying to create the exact number of cannibals for the trip. On top of that, since he's an ultimate Iron Man, when you die, you lose every item in your inventory. You don't keep three of them. So there was also strategy involved on how to do this as efficiently as possible. At the time of achieving this drop, it looks like he suicided most of his good items at the Nettles area in Edgeville, which also sparred him losing his best items if he did die. The most unique thing on this account though, and the primary reason for the feature, is his 276 raids kill count, which is the highest I've ever seen for a 10 HP Iron Man account and madly inspiring for my liability series. To get raids kill count on a 10 HP account, he does farming by raking seeds and then planting the herbs, and I've never even thought of that. He also does the standard catching and cooking bats method, and he says that once he cooks the bats, he has other players eat them for 50% more points. He usually gets 15k to 25k points per game depending on the team size. So far he's achieved 5 drops including Rigor, 2 Augury Scrolls, the Ancestral Hat, and even an Elder Maul. What he can do with these drops I really don't know but Fashionscape is certainly on fleek. And no disrespect bro but please do not get the claws before me, I want to try to be the first 10 HP to get those. Other minor achievements as he called them include the Dragon Axe, Phoenix Pet, Tangle Root, and Pet Rocky. Overall, sick account so far, man, and definitely looking forward to future progress on this account. Next on our countdown is the player Hit Ponzi. Hit Ponzi is currently working on becoming the first player in Old School RuneScape with a 25 combat 99 hit points account. The inspiration behind his hit points peer was basically a culmination of other unique accounts we've seen before. They are bored of playing on main accounts but still want to play Old School RuneScape and find a new challenge. Right around this time of boredom with his main account, he found out about the Varek Museum cleaning rework. This rework would increase experience from about 400 experience per hour to 2000 experience per hour, so we got the idea of making an HP peer. At the time, no one else really had a high level HP peer, so the uniqueness involved of being the first high level one was inspiring and it motivated him. At first he was only going to go to 75 HP for Zenite Jewelry, but after reaching it fairly quickly, only 600 hours or so, he decided he wanted to keep going. Today, he currently sits at 87 hit points, which is 4 million total experience and hit points. Yes, that comes out to about 2,000 hours of Varak Museum cleaning. When I asked him how he could keep doing this, treacherous journey, he told me that he has a community of around 40 players in Discord, with usually 3-5 to five of them always cleaning in World 304 together and having a fun time. He attributes some of his success and motivation to this community. His long term goal is of course 99 hit points, but he also wants to make his 99 hit points an untrimmed cape. Most of his other non-combat stats are base 80s and eventually he would like those to 99 as well, after 99 hit points of course. Something worth mentioning was a poll 2 or 3 months ago that would have completely devalued his account. At the time of this poll coming out, he was 83 hit points. The poll was in relation to last man standing. The question was, should the LMS rewards shop offer combat experience rewards as described in the blog? This would be similar to combat XP rewards offered from pest control, but offer slightly less experience. The poll almost passed, being one of those near miss polls with 74.5% of the vote. And since these HP peers can't do pest control as it requires 40 combat, if this poll were to pass, it would have completely changed the meta and also made this future achievement of Hipponzi's not as unique. Crazy how just 500 more yes votes could have completely changed the fate of his account.
The final player to be featured in episode number 5 is the one defense peer Enzis of Peer Crew CC, a clan for 1 to 20 defense skiller peers. Enzis is a completely maxed account for his build, sitting at 99991 with all combat and non combat skills at 99 and 2179 total level. He's a player monitor in the game and he's been one for about 7 years now. And back when he first got player mod, it was really rare for a peer to have player moderation status. He made the account within minutes of the old school RuneScape servers going live and actually was a twin peer with a friend of his who quit shortly after to leave Enzis to carry the torch. And boy, has he certainly done that. Today, Enzis has over 771 million total experience, including 200 mil attack, which puts him at rank 46. He also has 153 million strength experience, 125 million hit points experience, 31 million range experience, and even 22 million slayer experience. He was the second peer to 99 slayer in old school runescape. His first 85 slayer levels or so came at just 15k slayer experience per hour back then. Slayer has been one of those skills that updates over time have significantly improved experience per hour. His 200 mil attack was done at 70k experience per hour, meaning about 2900 hours to 200 mil. His method was Nightmare Zone of course, and he's doing the same method for strength. So far he's invested 2000 hours for 153 million strength experience, so about 900 hours left to 200 mil. Ensis was also the first peer to completely max out combat with one defense, which included 99 prayer, hitting 101 combat. And to this day, he still has maintained zero experience in the defense skill. Hell yes. Many people still ask him why not get 99 defense and a max cape. He has put way too much effort into revolving his gameplay around one defense and it would completely undermine everything he's worked for. He currently has four pets including the agility and mining pet as well as the chaos elemental and mole pet. His long term goal after 200 mil strength is to pet hunt, something he looks forward to doing. Welcome to episode number 6. The first player we'll be featuring today is Iwi. Iwi is currently the best 10 HP Iron Man peer in game. He sits at 50 combat with 60-74-1, 33 prayer, 81 range, and 91 magic. He has 1906 total level, including 13 non-combat 99s. He's 98 fletching and 98 smithing, which are his final two non-combat 99s needed for all 99s, with the exception of his 73 slayer. His original goal on the account was an untrimmed construction cape. To achieve this goal, his plan was to mine and smith rune items for money. At 93 mining and 89 smithing, he had enough money for 99 construction, and so his adventure began. He cut 217k oak logs at the woodcutting guild, made them all into oak planks, and then proceeded to knock out 1 to 99 construction in just one weekend, 36 total hours of gameplay. Cutting 217k oak logs got him all the way to 95 woodcutting in the process. After the untrim construction, cape was achieved, his next big focus was 99 Herbler. For this, he stole seeds from the Master Farmer, which is absolute AIDS at 10 HP, getting 99 Thieving in the process. After he got 99 Thieving, he started farming the seeds pickpocketed, which ended up taking 6 months at 6 plus herb runs per day. A unique thing about this grind was that Iwi figured out how to complete My Arms Big Adventure quest for the additional herb patch. He was the first 10 HP account to complete this quest. Part of his herbler grind also involved making 13k weapon poison plus plus. This included 100 hours of time just to collect the cave nightshade. From there, he still had to farm 13k poison ivy berries, as well as slowly repick 13k coconuts from his palm trees. For those of you who understand the process of making weapon poison plus plus, you'll understand that making 13k weapon poison plus plus, as well as his achievement of 99 herbler, is absolutely mental. Another crazy thing worth mentioning is that Iwi has made 5 525k cannonball so far for his 98 smithing. He bought all the ores from the blast furnace area, smelted them into 126k steel bars there, before eventually smithing them into cannonballs. For those of you who've made cannonballs before, you know that the process is probably one of the least enjoyable things on all of old school RuneScape. When he completes 99 smithing, he'll have 625k cannonballs, which will be enough for approximately 96 slayer. After maxing his account, he hopes to do raids in hopes of getting the coveted dragon claws. And for those of you who wonder how long he's played on this account, well, he's a little bit over 5300 hours. In early January of 2018, a tweet posted at the time by a player now known as Zulo expressed that he was working on a new project. At the time, Zulo was known as Boji, 
a max level 3 skiller. After a brief stint with the Hardcore Iron Man project, after he finished maxing on his skiller, Bochi ended up scrapping the project and the account Zulo was born. Zulo was a one skill at a time style account. However, he took the one skill at a time idea and gameplay to a whole new level. His gameplay involves zooming right past 99 and going all the way to 200 mil in a skill before moving on to the next one. The interesting thing about his gameplay is that he truly is doing one skill at a time. You can argue that current accounts doing 99s one at a time kind of bend the rules in a way by allowing skills that are already at 99 to be trained. With these accounts, experience is being gained in multiple skills at a time. What I mean by this is you have a skill at 99 that is getting experience, as well as skills that the particular player is trying to get to 99 and thus multiple skills are getting experience at once. However, with Zulo, he's truly locking an experience in each skill by getting it to 200 mil and avoiding that dilemma and thus there's really no rule bending. I hope that makes sense. To date, Zulo has four 200 mils. His first 200 mil was cooking, which took him six months to complete. After cooking, his second 200 mil he decided on was smithing. For smithing, it only took him two weeks to 99. Once he was 99, it took him an additional six months to 200 mil. His third skill to 200 mil was fire making, which was five months from start to finish, his best pace to a 200 mil skill so far. His fourth and final skill to 200 mil so far was crafting. He did this in 161 days, just over five months, and he just achieved 200 mil crafting back on November 8th, 2019, so actually all eyes on Zulo for which skill he's going to decide next. He also has a YouTube channel with 2.5k subscribers, I think we can get him to 3k, his link is in the bio, go check him out. Yes boys, yes! The next person on our countdown, and one that I've wanted to feature for quite a while now, is the popular YouTuber with over 65k subscribers. Devious. Devious has been actively involved in different Iron Man game modes since they were officially launched in October 13th, 2014. He first started with the regular Iron Man mode on that date. He had incredible success on that account, ended up being the second player in the Iron Man game mode to get 99 attack, the second player to 99 strength, the second player to 99 defense, and also the second player to 99 slayer. He was also the fourth player to get 99 hit points. He ended up maxing his Iron Man account in just over two years in October of 2000. 2016. One month after maxing his standard Iron Man account, the cards fell perfectly in his lap and the hardcore Iron Man game mode was released in November. He immediately jumped on that game mode and over the course of the next 22 months, he released 99 episodes in the form of a progress series of him maxing his hardcore Iron Man account. He did not die on his journey to max total level, but he did have a close moment that everyone is probably familiar with that eventually became known as the Devious Challenge. Oh my fucking god. In September of 2018, he received a few YouTube comments on his Hardcore Iron Man series finale saying that he should try and max every Iron Man game mode. He took that advice and created the Ultimate Iron Man account on September 16th of 2018. Unlike the other two Iron Man modes, this one involved a huge learning curve to it for Devious as he wasn't able to bank of course. To this day, he's 51 episodes in and recently achieved 99 Slayer. His 99 Slayer on the Ultimate means that he's been the first player to achieve 99 Slayer on each of the four game modes, something that no one has ever done before. In total, here's how he's fared. For the Standard mode, he was top 100. For the Iron Man mode, he was second. For the Hardcore Iron Man mode, he was eighth. And then the Ultimate, he was top 90. If you guys are looking for a really enjoyable series and probably one of the most genuine creators on the RuneScape platform, be sure to go check out Devious. His links and everyone's links always are in the description. Next on our countdown, it's the Player Agility HCIM. As you probably guessed, this player does agility on a Hardcore Iron Man account. He's ranked 2 agility for Hardcore Iron Man accounts and does sit at 200 mil experience. Agility HCIM absolutely loves agility. If not getting the agility pet after 99 agility on his main, he decided to continue the skill. After 22 mil experience, he still didn't have the pet. That's when he decided he just wanted a fresh start on an account where he does agility only, and so agility 
HCIM was born. Agility HCIM has been doing agility for roughly two years. In July of this year, he finally completed his long-term goal of 200 million experience. After 200 mil, he had just over 77,000 marks of grace, as well as four squirrels. The unique thing though is that this mad lad continued agility post 200 mil. To date, he's at 83,000 marks of grace and has his eyes set at 100k marks. He doesn't think anyone has got 100k marks of grace before, but he wasn't sure. Since 200 mil agility, he has rolled an additional 10 squirrels and now sits at 14 on his collection log, which I'm guessing is the most rolls in old school runescape as well. If his drop rate were to continue squirrel wise since he's been 200 mil, when he hits 100k marks of grace, he will have roughly 40 squirrel rolls. <laughs> so crazy, man. Anyways, early congrats on 100k marks, man, and thanks for the submission. The last player on our countdown for episode number 6 is Ricey. Ricey is a completely maxed 1 defense peer with 2,179 total level. He has 107 mil attack experience, 28 mil in strength, 50 mil range, 52 mil magic, and 80 mil hit points experience. He also has over 52 mil in slayer experience on a 1 defense account, which is absolutely insane. His goal is to become the first player to 200 mil slayer on a 1 defense peer. He's currently in 2nd place and his biggest competition is Umemi who I've featured before, and he sits at 88 mil Slayer experience. Ricey originally created his account to be a PKer. After getting bored of the wilderness, he started to skill and eventually found a clan called Peer Crew, a 1 to 20 defense skilling clan. Peer Crew really inspired him to continue skilling, and eventually Ricey maxed all of his non combat stats. As mentioned already, the main goal is 200 mil Slayer, but before he gets that, he will get 200 mil attack. After 200 mil attack, Ricey is going to run into a slight problem. Since the whip's other two attack styles involve defense experience, he's either going to have to switch to a Ceridoman Sword or Dragon Scimitar and train strength, or even switch to magic or range. Hmm, an interesting predicament he's in, but I'm sure he'll figure it out. Another unique thing is that Ricey has 13 pets, which is pretty unique for a peer. That includes some pretty impressive kill counts for a 1 defense account, including 5,000 Kraken kills, 5,000 Cerberus kills, 4,000 Thermi, and 4,500 Grotesque Guardians kills, which he still doesn't have that pet noon to show for, unfortunately. Overall, congrats on the achievements thus far, and best of luck on that 200 mil Slayer. Starting out the countdown for the most unique account season number 2 and episode number 7 is the player DDSTTV. DDSTTV is an Iron Man account sitting at 10 attack, 99 strength, and 1 defense. He's 13 prayers so he doesn't have overhead prayers. He's also 76 ranged and 59 hit points. He's only 52 combat. DDSTTV started the account with the intention of building the perfect Abby Mauler PKer. His goal was to create an Abby that could range forever. After 67 range, you become ranged base, and since you continue to gain loads of experience in ranged when Abby Maul PKing, your ranged level continues to increase and ultimately makes your account unbalanced in terms of range to strength ratios. His solution to fix this dilemma was to create an Iron Man account. The Iron Man account mode would allow himself to cap his ranged level at the level he wanted and keep his strength to ranged ratio perfectly synchronized. The reason why this works is because as an Iron Man account, you don't gain combat experience or HP experience when PKing, so he wouldn't be leveling his range level when PKing. To date, DDSTTV has certainly achieved his goal of building the perfect Abby Mauler. He's one of the strongest accounts in Gilinor, boasting of a kill death ratio of 30 to 1. He's even had an 80 kill streak before. On top of all this, he's ranked 10 in Bounty Hunter Iron Man target kills with 581. But the uniqueness doesn't stop there. DDSTTV has accomplished the lowest level to physically wield a twisted bow on an Iron Man account, achieving it at 49 combat. He's also achieved both the Dex and Arcane Prayer Scrolls, all within 130 chambers of Zarek kill count. DDS used a Bone Crossbow to kill scavs for bait and then fished with the bait it dropped. But the uniqueness still doesn't stop there. He was also able to accomplish both the Berserker Necklace and Region Bracelet at just 72 magic. 
Why that is so unique is because you actually need 87 magic to enchant the onyx to create both of these items, and since he's an Iron Man, he needed to enchant the onyx himself. DDS was able to do it at 72 magic, however, by finding a loophole which allowed him to temporarily boost his magic level to 87 by drinking an overload in raids. This was patched in March and literally is not even possible anymore, which makes his account even more unique having both of these items at just 72 magic. Other quick things worth mentioning include his 99 strength, which he pumped at 12k experience per hour at the Blast Furnace, which took 1300 hours. He also has achieved Ranger Boots and the Chaos Elemental Pack. DDS recently came out with his first PK video on his YouTube channel. The link to that is in the description. He's only at 137 subscribers on his YouTube channel, so go subscribe and let's hopefully get him to over a thousand. Next on our countdown is the player Feet Picks. Feet Picks is currently the lowest level hit points account to accomplish the Champion's Cape at just 21 hit points. It's also worth mentioning that Feet Picks is an Ultimate Iron Man account at 57 combat. For those familiar with the Ultimate Iron Man game mode, you understand you're capped in the sense of no trading other players as well as no banking. You'll see why this is important later. Before even getting started on the Champion's Cape grind, Feet Picks had to make 500k cannonballs from scratch since he was an Iron Man account. The cannonballs would of course limit his hit points experience gained and keep him on track to accomplish his goal as the lowest level hit points account to achieve the champion's cape. The 500k cannonballs took 8 full months to make from scratch. After the cannonballs were made, it was time to start the journey of killing each of the 10 monsters that dropped the scrolls, each at a 1 in 5000 drop rate by the way. After obtaining all the scrolls except the earth warrior scroll, he decided it would be wise to complete the challenges associated with each of the 9 scrolls he had because the Earth Warriors were located in the wilderness. Of course, he couldn't just bank the 9 other champion scrolls since he was an ultimate Iron Man, so he first decided to quickly do the Goblin, Imp, and Hobgoblin champion scroll challenges since you can cannon those ones. After those were completed, this left him with 6 scrolls left in his inventory before he could start cannoning the Earth Warriors. Since he had to figure out strategies to kill these remaining 6 champion challenges, he got nervous he would die. And dying was a big deal because the scroll challenges are in an instance area, meaning you lose all items on death, which meant he would have lost the remaining 6 scrolls. So he thought of a backup plan. His backup plan would be to get a looting bag and put his scrolls in there, then suicide and have up to an hour before the timer ran out and you'd have to go back and pick up his stuff obviously. While collecting the looting bag in the wilderness, his 2 year old decided to yank on the internet cord and he ended up dying in the wilderness and losing all 6 of the challenge scrolls. Oh my god. Imagine getting all the drops, then planning on doing all the work to avoid dying and then dying in a way that you never even thought of. That would absolutely suck. Anyways, long story short, Feet Picks had to regain all six of the champion scrolls, and after successfully doing that, he executed the original looting bag plan and was able to successfully complete the champion's cape. Feet Picks also has accomplished the ranger boots on his account at 602 medium clues. Since he's only six magic, the only teleports available to him were the Artie Cloak and Chronicle Teleport, meaning he literally had to walk everywhere. This grind took three months and also involved catching nearly 40k electric implants. On this grind though, he did manage to spot and successfully catch a lucky impling which gave him ranger gloves which are best in slot for his account. Damn, how do you top that? The next player on our countdown is the player Pastry. Pastry is 21 attack, 1 strength, 1 defense, 13 ranged, 40 prayer, and 16 hit points. He's 16 combat and is known to currently be the lowest combat level to complete the fight caves and receive the fire cape. If you haven't figured it out by now, well, this is actually the legend exact, the popular PVMer on Twitch.tv who recently beat Rendy's 17 combat fire keep record by one level. Exact used similar strategies as Rendy himself, primarily focusing on the method of poisoning each NPC within the fight cave and letting that poison damage and eventually kill each monster. The major difference between the two players' attempts was that Exact figured out a strategy to complete the fire cape at just 40 prayer, whereas Rendy had 43 prayer and protect from melee. With 40 prayer and only protect from magic and protect from missiles available, Exact's precision on the later waves involving both the 360s, 180s, and 90s had to be flawless. Just watch this clip, it literally shows the crazy planning and strategy involved to pull these later waves off. Wow. 
When he got to Jad himself, he also figured out a method to avoid getting meleeed by the healers by safe spotting them on each other. Here's a look at that. Absolutely insane stuff there by exact, but really all I gotta say is this. Stay tuned for the 15 combat cape. It's gonna happen. But until then, let's move on. Next on our countdown is the player Sinia. Sinia is currently striving to become the first 10 HP account to level all skills by one level each. What that really means is all skills will go from level 1 to level 2, then level 3, then level 4, and so on. These type of accounts take an unbelievable amount of patience to create and also a bit of strategy. For example, runecrafting is typically done in the later levels before crafting or mining, since doing Zaya runecrafting raises both mining and crafting in the process. Due to the extreme amount of patience involved with these builds, most people don't quite make it all the way to all 99s. However, when they get close, like where Sanya is at all level 96s and level 97s, the account becomes very satisfying to watch. Sometimes setbacks do happen, and that unfortunately happened to Sanya after she got hacked and the hacker got two defense when she was base 90. After that happened, Sanya changed her plan on the account slightly and will now also focus on 99 defense by falso cleaning at 600 XP an hour after she finishes off her non combat 99s. Actually, I think that it got updated and it's now closer to a little over 1000 XP per hour. Still, it's going to take her a long time. Once falso cleaning to 99 defense is completed, the final thing Sanya will need is to accomplish 99 Slayer. While I would have preferred the clean one Slayer on this account, I admire the attempt to go for 99 as well, which she will attempt to get by using the alternate account method. Thanks for the submission, Sanya, and I really enjoy checking out your account. Early congrats on the non combat 99s, and I look forward to watching the 99 defense and 99 slayer grinds as well. The final player on our countdown is the player Barbfish. Barbfish, currently known as No One's Perfect, is rank 1 for 20 attack accounts in old school runescape by a long shot. He was 2099 with 99 HP and 40 prayer. Barbfish first created the account to build one of those OG corrupted obby accounts. For those of you unfamiliar with this account build, it's basically a 20 attack obby mauler build, but with the ability to use corrupted weapons, such as the corrupted Vesta's Longsword and corrupted Statue's Warhammer. Of course, this poll never passed, and to this day, the account remains an Abby Mahler peer. However, the big benefit of 20 attack versus the standard 1 attack is increased accuracy, as well as the ability to get up to 79 ranged in magic at 20 attack and 99 HP, versus only 67 ranged and magic at 1 attack and 99 HP. To date, Barfish is 200 million strength experience, 88 million fishing experience, 64 million HP experience, 60 million agility experience, and 40 million woodcutting experience. The 200 mil strength experience took 30 3,500 hours alone on the account. Some of the experience came from barb fishing, as his name of course implies, but a lot of it also came from sand crabs at just 50k experience per hour. The additional fishing and agility XP he has puts the account closer to 5,000 hours of game time log. Absolutely insane account and one that I'd love to watch BK with those corrupted weapons. Will those eventually come to the game? We will just have to wait and see. This account series is called Most Unique Accounts. Throughout the series, I've showcased dozens of accounts that have combined both uniqueness and personal achievement. But what about combining both of those things on top of the ability for an account to never be replicated again? Meet the first player of the episode, and trade. And trade is a 12 HP Iron Man account sitting at 65 attack, 85 strength, and 1 defense, with 97 ranged, 44 prayer, and 94 magic. He's the lowest level Iron Man account to have the Dark Bow in game, achieving it at just 53 combat. The Dark Bow is one of the strongest weapons in game for player killing. For a low HP Iron Man to get their hands on it would be the end all be all. But the Dark Bow sits locked behind the Morning Zen Part 2 quest, which gives 25k HP 
experience upon its completion. Assuming you were 10 HP before completing the quest, the 25k HP experience would take you straight to 32 hit points. So how did Antrade achieve the Dark Bow on a 12 HP Iron Man account? It all started on a cold, windy night in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Antrade was standing near the furnace trying to warm up from the bitter cold outside. He was grinding 400k cannonballs from scratch. This took him 3 months, but it was the foundation of his journey to remain as low HP as possible. Eventually he got 85 Slayer with these cannonballs and then used Wild Pies to boost to 90. At last, he was ready to kill the Dark Beasts. Today, you have two options on where to kill Dark Beasts, the Mourner's Tunnel or Iowar Dungeon, each requiring the completion of Morning's End Part 2 quest. However, prior to the July 25th, 2019 release of the Iowar Dungeon, Dark Beasts were located in the Mourner Tunnels as well as a different region, the Catacombs of Karen. And the interesting thing about the Catacombs is, well, you didn't need the Morning's End Part 2 completion to access them. This prevented the 25k HP experience reward for quest completion and allowed and trade to go for the Dark Bow at just 12 HP. Since you can't cannon in the Catacombs of Karend, and trade had to strategize a method to kill them while minimizing HP experience gain. He decided on using the Bone Dagger special attack to inflict one damage, which is a 100% guaranteed chance of hitting. For those unaware, most NPC game mechanics require at least one damage dealt to get the drop. From there, he would use tick eating with baskets of onions, cabbages, and potatoes to slowly chip away at the 220 hit points that the Dark Beast had. This method was extremely slow, maxing at just 4 kills per hour. Luckily for Antrade, he got the Dark Bow at just 47 kill count, which was extremely lucky considering it's a 1 in 512 drop rate. This insane grind of making 400k cannonballs from scratch, then getting 85 Slayer with a cannon only, and then being patient enough at Dark Beasts was well worth it. Other major accomplishments on the account include the Granite Maul, which is how he got 12 HP, Dragon Throne Axes drop, which are unbelievable for PKing for him, an imbued heart, full Elder Chaos robes, the Master's Wand and Mage's Book, Ranger Boots twice, the Imbued Crystal Bow, Revitalization Pool which is also great for PKing, the Slayer Ring, Zamorak Cape, Chaos Helipet, the Pharaoh Scepter, and a large spade. Most of his goals are completed on the account, but he still is looking to get the Dragon Warhammer and also the Robin Hood hat from Clue Scrolls. Next on our countdown is the player Enjoys. Enjoys is 60 attack, 99 strength, and 1 defense, with 99 magic, 99 ranged, and 45 prayer. He's a completely max 60 attack peer with 2086 total level and over 650 million total experience. He has 112 million ranged experience, 66 million strength experience, 66 million HP experience, and 34 million magic experience. He also has 90 million mining experience on Enjoys. Wait, 90 million mining experience. No, no, 290 million mining experience. Wait, what? Yeah, that's right. Enjoys all ILU, now known as O Daniel O, has 200 million mining experience. So his main has 90 mil, his alt has 200 mil, so 290 million total mining experience? I'm convinced this must be the most mining XP in OSRS by one player across multiple accounts. Enjoys alt's purpose was to fund his peer for demanding skills such as construction, herbler, and slayer. He achieved this through using the motherload mine for profit post 99 mining. Doing this he was only gaining 40k mining experience per hour and 450 to 500k GP per hour which means it took him 5,000 hours to 200 mil mining profiting over 2 billion GP for his peer in the process. After Enjoys had completed 99 and all of his non-combat related skills, he figured it would be about time to PVM for his last skill, Slayer. During his journey towards 99 Slayer, because of his low combat level of 82, he had no other option but to rely on Sheldar for his Slayer tasks. He managed to claim and maintain an all-time record for Slayer XP gained in a week and month within the peer bracket upon finishing 99. This was the beginning of his passion for PVM and desire for pet hunting that led him onto a pursuit of a obtaining all the pets he found most favorable. On top of completely maxing his 60 attack peer, Enjoys also has one of the highest boss pet totals for a 1 defense peer with 17 pets. This includes all wilderness and slayer pets. His pet luck seems to be overall lucky, although it did take him 4,075 Callisto kills for the pet, which ranks him 43 in game for highest Callisto kill count. Future goals on the account include getting 200 mil mining experience on Enjoys, and then ultimately deciding on additional 200 mils 
to tackle afterwards. And Joyce would also like to shout out the clan peer crew for their incredible support and guidance. MMORPG, who most of you know as Curtis, is the next most unique account in the series. MMORPG is a completely maxed Iron Man account with 2,277 total level. He has over 1.1 billion total XP in game, good for rank 38 for all Iron Man accounts. If you've watched his gameplay before, you know that the majority of it revolves around PBM, which is the reason for the feature. Just a couple of months ago, Curtis became the first player to achieve all major grinds and items on his Iron Man account. Curtis put out a bank video a few weeks ago which goes over an in-depth description of all of his achievements. To summarize his accolades, firstly it's worth mentioning that he has roughly a 14 billion GP bank, including max cash. He has what seems like endless amounts of resources for skilling if he ever decides on that route. But what really caught my eye is what he summarizes as his PogChamp tab. Um, next uh, tab is what we call the PogChamp tab. It's the big tab of the year, every single year, and this year it is looking incredible, my friends, because inside here is pretty much every major item you can get on an Ironman account. So, let's click it. Boom. In this tab, he's amassed every Chambers of Xerak item, including two Twisted Bows, every Theater of Blood item, including two Scythes, all Spirit Shields, including an Elysian, two Spectrals, and six more Spectral Sigils, and two Arcanes, and three additional Arcane Sigils. He has all God Wars Dungeon items, all Dagonoth King Rings and Wilderness Rings, all Zalra items, including both Mutagens, the Dragon Warhammer, all three Visage Shields, Draconic Wyvern and Skeletal, all Cerberus Boot Sets, all High Hydra drops, including two full Dragon Hunter lances, and also all Revenant drops, including the Thamaran Scepter, which he got at over 48,000 kill count. I'll leave a link in the description to his full 2019 bank video, as his video can do more justice in 23 minutes than what I can in 2 minutes, but overall, very juicy. Next on our countdown is the player Fluff Bear. Fluffbear was the first player in Old School RuneScape to get the 8 Combat Fire Cape. For those of you who don't know, Fluffbear is Exact, the popular Twitch streamer with the low level Inferno Capes and now the low level Fire Capes as well. Before we jump into this account, let me give you a quick timeline of how we got here. So in episode number 7, I showcased Exact getting the 16 Combat Fire Cape under the Elias name Pastry, which beat Rendy's 17 Combat Fire Cape at the time by one level. During that video, Exact said he thought the 15 Combat Fire Cape was possible. Fast forward just 3 short weeks later and Exact beat his own record by 2 levels, getting the 14 Combat Cape. At the time, Exact thought he sealed the record by his Reddit post, but yet, he only really sealed it for less than 24 hours. Because during the first 24 hours of his new account being the record holder for the lowest combat cape, Rendy put out a video getting the first single digit fire cape in old school RuneScape history at 9 combat, beating Exact by 5 levels. During his incredible 9 combat fire cape run, he pioneered yet another new strategy. This was the same strategy that Exact used on Fluff Bear for the 8 combat cape. The strategy involved using noted recoil rings on an unwielded ring of suffering, which somehow reset the counter of a player's wielded ring of recoil back to 40 damage. I don't know why this works, but it does. And funnily enough, this recoil strategy idea actually goes back to Kemp Q's idea in 2017 about getting 75 hit points and wielding the Ring of Suffering for unlimited recoils to defeat the fight caves. The insane thing about the 9 combat cape versus the 8 combat cape was the overhead prayers available. In Randy's 9 combat cape, he had 43 prayer and used all 3 protection prayers. In Exact's 8 combat cape, he only had 37 prayer and used protect from magic. For the level 90 rangers as well as the range attacks at Jab, exact tick gate their damage. However, tick eating only worked within 8 squares of the level 90 rangers. Outside of 8 squares, he had to innovate a strategy that made tick eating work, which I didn't fully understand, but regardless, it apparently worked. Overall, the video ends by saying a 4 combat fire cape is possible. That would be a cape using no prayers. I guess we'll have to wait and see, but congrats to Exact and Rendy on this space race. Incredible by both guys. Both of their socials are below. Meet the final player of the countdown, free to play LO. 
Free-to-play Elo, as you may have guessed by his name, is a free-to-play player who currently sits rank 11 on the free-to-play high scores in Old School RuneScape. A couple of things that jump out at me right away about this account, first the account is only 2 years old, it was started in late 2017, and the progress has been absolutely incredible my friends. He's only 24 levels off maxing at the time of this recording. Second, he's funded the entire account by the account itself, meaning he's used no alts like many free to play players do to make money. This was a restriction he put in place when he first started the account, as he saw that most free to play accounts were funded by pay to play methods. To date, he has all 99s, with the exception of 91 Prayer, 91 Runecrafting, and 91 Mining. Some of his biggest accomplishments thus far include 99 Strength in one week, and 91 Prayer which was achieved by burying 400k Big Bones. He's also said that his 91 Runecrafting was a bigger achievement on the account, as he had to farm over 5k Scepter pieces to teleport to Barbarian Village to even Runecraft efficiently. Free to play Elo has made over 1 billion GP just from flipping on his account, again without using alts. To date, he has over 5,000 hours played in just 2 years, which averages over 8 hours per day. His future goals include maxing and then eventually working on 200 mil smithing. When you think of bossing, one of the things that most of us take for granted is overhead prayers. That is, protect from magic, protect from missiles, and protect from melee. While most bosses use multiple combat styles, for example the General Gardar at Banos and the God Wars dungeon uses both melee and ranged, the ability to protect from one of the styles, melee in this case, significantly lowers the damage you receive. On top of that, you can typically bring high defense bonuses in their other attack style, ranged in this case, which makes you even less prone to getting hit. But what about a player that doesn't have overhead prayers? And what about peers with only one defense, which limits their ability to have high defense bonuses in that second combat style? How would they go about bossing? I'm not entirely sure, but that's why Buds is starting off our countdown for the most unique accounts, season number 2 and episode number 9. Buds is a peer with 60 attack, 99 strength, and 1 defense. He's 31 prayer with 99 hit points, 99 ranged, and 99 magic. Buds currently has only 31 prayer and 1 defense and somehow has amassed 16 pets. Among those pets include being the first 31 prayer 1 defense peer account with the Abyssal Sire, the pet Dark Core from the Corporal Beast, as well as the Lil Zik pet from the Thiever of Blood. He also has achieved Dust from Challenge Mode in the Chambers of Zarek, meaning that he really has 16.5 pets. He was the first 1 defense peer with any prayer level to have both the Omelet as well as the Dust. His longest pet grind appears to be the Prince Black Dragon, which took him 5,892 kill count, which ranks him 143 in game for highest KBD kill count at the time of this recording. Not only is receiving all of these boss pets unique for a 31 prayer account, it's also worth noting that he has received the Scythe, two Rapiers, and the Justicier Chest Guard from the Theater of Blood. I still have no idea how he does the Theater of Blood at 31 prayer and 1 defense. Future goals for Bud include getting 28 pets to fill his inventory and also getting the Jad pet as well as all God Wars dungeon boss pets. Next on our countdown is the player Ohai Slaw. Ohai Slaw is currently a maxed AGS peer sitting at 88 combat with 75 attack, 99 strength, and 1 defense. He's 52 prayer, 99 range, 99 magic, and also 99 hit points. Ohai Slaw is a completely maxed account sitting at 2,108 total level and 400 million total experience. Among that includes 63 million ranged experience, 51 million strength experience, and 39 million hit points experience. Maxing took him around 2.5 half years, but it makes the account look so clean, so it was worth it. What caught my eye about this account and what is really unique is the fact that he has over 2700 raids kill count. This puts him in the top 300 for Chambers of Zara kill count. He's also rank 1 Chambers of Zara kill count for peers by over 300 kill count. Ohai Saw has seen 50 total items since the collection log was released and a few more before that time. On the log, he's missing only the Ancestral Top, Elder Maul, and Omelet Pet for the Chambers. For Challenge Mode, he's 46 kill count and is missing the Dust and of course the Capes. The downfalls that you don't see behind this crazy kill count is the difficulty finding a team. Even on my own unique account attempt, my liability, it's extremely hard to find people to raid with. Ohai Slaw said that in the beginning especially, it was hard to find people to raid with, but once he built up his total kill count, more and more people also allowed him to join their team. He also said being maxed has helped him as well. Future goals on the account include finishing the Omelette and Dust, and then ultimately going for the Theater of Blood Pet Lil Zik, as well as the Infernal Cape. 
Next on our countdown of episode number 9 is the player Wyrak. Wyrak proudly represents the free-to-play community and his entire account has been based off of the free-to-play servers. To date, he is a level 3 skiller with 3 200 mils, including 200 mil smithing, 200 mil firemaking, and 200 mil crafting. His 200 mil smithing was his first 200 mil. He smithed rune plate legs at roughly 265k experience per hour. For 200 mil XP, this came out to 750. 55 hours. It is important to note that his 200 mil smithing funded both his other 200 mils, fire making and crafting. His second 200 mil was fire making. This was achieved using the best tiered log available in free to play, U logs. Burning U logs yields roughly 293,000 XP per hour, which equates to 685 hours for 200 mil. Man, members really do have it much better as Winter Tote gives more XP per hour and also gives Winter Tote crates after each game, which yield resources in different skills. Lastly, his third and final 200 mil to date was crafting. His crafting was strictly from cutting uncut emeralds. You can cut roughly 4300 gems per hour and uncut emeralds give 67.5 crafting experience per gem. This comes out to roughly 290k XP per hour or 690 hours alone for his 200 mil crafting. For just these three 200 mils, over 2100 combined hours was required. But what if I told you that these 200 mils aren't even considered by him to be his biggest achievement. That's right, Wyrak believes that his biggest achievement is actually his 99 rune crafting. Again, this accomplishment was achieved in only the free-to-play servers. He did the first half of his rune crafting, making Earth Tierras at roughly 30k experience per hour. Once he was around level 90, he found out about a better method, making body tierras and suiciding to the Dark Wizard NPCs. As you can see in his 99 rune crafting picture, he has an iron plate body which allowed the Dark Wizards to hit him a bit quicker and essentially made suiciding faster. He found out that suiciding body tierras is around 35,000 XP per hour. In total, 99 room crafting took almost 400 hours. And although it is a little bit less than his 200 mils, it's quite a bit for the room crafting skill. The next player on the countdown, Pledged, now known by the name Irritant, is believed to be the first player in old school RuneScape with an Untrim Herbler cape as an Iron Man account. As you may know from watching YouTube series such as Devious's, 99 Herbler is considered to be one of the hardest grinds for an Iron Man account. A lot of players use any XP lamps they get from Genies or even from Dark Relics during raids on Herbler. So that was the backstory on Irritant's thought process from making this account and why he wanted to get an Untrim Herbler cape. And well, he ended up succeeding, but not without some major setbacks in his planning. When Irritant first started, he thought that the best method of getting 99 Herbler would be through the Giant Mole. So in order to do the Giant Mole efficiently, Irritant knew that he needed full Darox. And on an Iron Man account, well, getting full Darox isn't the easiest thing to do, as he had to grind out Barrows. By 368 kill count, he had the first three pieces, but was still missing the Darok legs. He went almost 1400 more KC drops for that piece and eventually was able to grab it at 1766 KC. Man, what a sigh of relief as this three month grind was finally over. But then he began the giant mole and realized that the nest given dropped an underwhelming amount of herb seeds for farming. So he spent three months grinding Darok specifically for the giant mole and his plan had completely failed him. You could say he was pretty irritated. Thanks to Devious' series, he was able to find another viable method. This included doing aberrant specters while doing King them a miscellanea passively. The aberrant specters grind was a tough one. He ended up having to kill 16,000 aberrant specters, which took four months. Upon completion, he still had to get the secondaries, which included 50 hours of time for 6,000 Zamrock wines, and another 50 or so hours doing agility to collect enough marks of grace to buy Amy Lace. After all of that was completed, the easiest step was making the potions, a mere 100 hours, and at last, his goal was complete. To this day, Irritant has 2,127 total level and is working on maxing the Iron Man. And unexpectedly, after recording this on the front page of Reddit, I was caught off guard by yet another person to achieve this as well. Herbler, by the way. Herbler, by the way, achieved the same untrimmed 99 herb cape on an Iron Man, but his method was completely different. He did herbivore for the first 1 mil herb experience and then grinded 1800 farming contracts for the herb seeds, which he planted and eventually yielded the herbs required for 99 Herbler. Congrats to both on this insane accomplishment. 
The final feature of the episode is, well, you guessed it, Rendy. Rendy, who I've featured several times in the series already, took Exact's 8 combat level fire cape and cut it in half with a level 4 fire cape of his own. His stats for his 4 combat fire cape included 1 attack, 1 strength, 4 defense, 1 prayer, 1 ranged, 1 magic, and 10 hit points. The fire cape was a culmination of using out of the box strategies for his success. Again, the cape primarily used the function of the ring of suffering and noted recoils on each other to get the unlimited recoil effect. This strategy was used on the 45s, 90s, 360s, and JAD. On the 180s, since tick-eating melee is nearly impossible, the method again involved using poison, which comes at a 1 in 4 chance of success every time a 1 is hit. The cape also used some new strategies, whom Rendy again was the pioneer of. First and foremost, Rendy used rotation 2 of the fight caves, which is optimal for 1 prayer accounts. For those unaware, there are 15 different rotations for fight caves. For context on Exact's 8 combat cape, he used a different rotation, rotation 5, which shows that Rendy was really relying on his own knowledge of the caves throughout the whole process. Rendy also used several foolproof strategies during the 4 combat run that he didn't use during his 9 combat cape to avoid dying. One such strategy was during the level 90 rangers. Since you can't tick eat on 10 HP, Rendy realized that once he was 9 HP, his next heal would take him to 10 HP, making him unable to tick eat, and giving the ranger roughly a 4 and 14 chance of one hitting him. What he cleverly did was complete the quest one small favor to unlock the Guthix rests, which increases a player player's HP by 5 levels. So if he tick 8 to 10 HP, his next drink would be the Guthix Rest to take him to 15 HP. And since Rangers can max up to only 13, he could never die and just resume tick eating. Another foolproof strategy that Rendy used was during Jad itself. During Jad's first attack, it is an out of sight attack. If it is a range attack, you literally have to perfectly tick eat within a one tick window. To time this correctly, his foolproof strategy involved keeping his NPC chat dialogue open. When the dialogue disappeared, he immediately knew that the attack was coming and he needed to eat. From there, he would have enough time to run to the other side of the Italy rock and set up the remainder tick eating. Rendy also used combo tick eating throughout this for combat completion, a strategy in which he said he hypothesized during his 18 combat fire cape. This is where the sacks of onions came in. The sacks of onions had multiple uses and multiple combo tickets within each one, as he could pull out a raw onion, use a knife and a bowl on it, and therefore cook it inside the vents inside the fight caves with a 0% burn rate at 76 cooking. The combo tick eating was used for both the 90 rangers and 360 majors. For the 90 rangers, it was especially useful from a far distance, greater than 9 squares. When a ranger is greater than 9 squares away, they will actually get off 2 attacks before the first one actually hits. So the combo tick eating essentially made it so Rendy was tick eating the first hit and the second hit in rapid succession. The combo tick eating would save him from getting stacked out with 2 quick attacks and give him enough time to get inside the 9 square zone for the ranger to have more normal, predictable attacks. Overall, just some insanely high IQ on the understanding of the game mechanics, the fight cave NPC mechanics, and just the overall layout of the fight caves in general. For someone to get the 3 combat cape, there is a 1 in 13 chance using Randy's method, but with good RNG on the 180 poisoning. Starting off our season finale of the most unique accounts, episode number 10 is the account Biotica. Biotica is an Iron Man account with 50 attack, 99 strength, 99 ranged, and magic, with 31 prayer and just 13 hit points. He's only 55 combat. Biotica is an absolute animal in the wilderness with the ability to stack anyone out within his combat bracket. He can hit 30 with Ice Barrage, followed by a 37, 37, 37 with the Granite Maul. That's 141 damage output all in a matter of seconds at just 55 combat. No wonder why he's rank 1 in Bounty Hunter kills for Iron Man with 3,307 and also rank 1 in Bounty Hunter Road kills for Iron Man with 1,690. Biotica's biggest accomplishments include completing Desert Treasure with 10 hit points and without overhead prayers, getting 99 strength which took 1,100 hours pumping at 12k experience per hour, and also getting the Granite Maul which required the grind to 75 Slayer through Wilderness Slayer without overheads, dodging PKers in the process. The 99 strength grind was an interesting one for Biotica 
Sabiotica as this was before many people knew about strength pumping. There were no crashers because no one knew how to crash the blast furnace pump at the time. When he got 99 strength, he was actually 199.1 and the first iron obby mauler to accomplish 99 strength in old school runescape at 36 combat. He also achieved the berserker necklace by using the now patched overload method in raids, which allowed him to stay at 70 magic, but boost temporarily to 87 magic to use the enchant onyx spell. The reason why this was so critical to boost this was because he didn't want to ruin his obby mauler at the time, and getting 87 magic would have raised his combat level past. 36. But eventually he got tired of Abimal Piquing and decided he wanted a change. And that change was 50 attack and the granite maul. For those unaware, a 10 HP Iron Man account or low level Iron Man account can get the granite maul by having an alt use blowpipe venom to get the gargoyle's HP down to low health. From there, the low level HP Iron Man account deals one damage before using a rock hammer to get the kill. In fact, he's had to get three granite mauls after a streamer lost his first one and he lost his second one in the wilderness to what he called an in-game bug that didn't allow him to protect item. Other monumental achievements include 99 ranged in magic. For Biotica's 99 ranged, he had to make all of the cannonballs from scratch since he's an Iron Man, which is a gruesome process. It's also worth mentioning that Biotica has another account, Biotica Jr. This account is also a low-level Iron Man rusher with the Granite Maul. For the Iron Man high scores, he's rank 3 bounty hunter with 1,334 score and rank 2 bounty hunter rogue right behind his main Biotica with a score of 614. I think our next submission is our first initiate peer on my most unique account series. We're at over 100 featured accounts now throughout the series so I could be wrong. Anyways, the initiate peer we are featuring is the player Timo. Timo is a completely maxed account with 50, 99, 20, 99 magic ranged in hit points and 45 prayer. He's a completely maxed account for his build with 2095 total level and over 500 million total experience. Timo first had the idea of creating an initiate peer and limiting himself to 20 defense when he was thinking of account builds that no one had. He didn't see anyone else with this build, all he saw was players who had peers or zerkers, but again no one with this 20 defense build. And that uniqueness is what propelled him to start the account. Timo's biggest accomplishment to date is probably his 27.5 million slayer experience since he is only 50 attack. His best weapon for Slayer is a Leaf Bladed Sword, which is about 30k Slayer experience per hour. Timo also has impressively amassed 13 pets, including some really nice PVM pets considering he's only 20 defense. The PVM pets he's got include the Calphite Princess, Hydra, Smoke Devil, Baby Mole, Prince Black Dragon, Chaos Elemental, Kraken, Skodos, and Venonatus. He also has three skilling pets, the Huron, Baby Chinchampa, and the Pet Beaver, which he went 70 million woodcutting experience dry of. His other pet is the Penance Queen. Timo's future goal is to get as many pets as possible with this build restriction. And of course, a quick shout out to his clan called Lab, which stands for Limited Account Builds. A few other players featured in this series like Darts is in this clan as well. Thanks for the submission man and best of luck achieving more pets. Next on our countdown is the player Diddy Boy one Diddy Boy is currently a level 3 skiller with the highest Slayer level in game, sitting at 88 Slayer. His end goal is of course 99, which would be a monumental accomplishment in an old score runescape. Imagine a level 3 walking around with the Slayer cape. Damn, that would be absolutely insane. Slayer for level 3s has evolved over the course of old school runescape. During the release of OSRS up until 2018, Slayer for level 3s was basically just recoiling NPCs to death. This was very restrictive and the highest Slayer level for level 3s at this time was in the high 60s. Then in 2018, the YouTuber I'm Tedious released a video showcasing a new Slayer method for level 3s. This method involved getting negative 64 attack bonus to guarantee that you'd constantly hit zeros on Slayer NPCs. When paired with a main account through Partner Slayer and coordination of attacking both accounts on the same tick, this kill assist method will grant the level 3 half of the Slayer experience per kill. This method is around 10k Slayer experience per hour, but it involves constant planning and attention. However, there is a slight problem with this method. Diddy Boy told me that level 3s can only get to negative 62 attack bonus, which means that they will still have a slight chance of hitting, gaining melee experience in the process. To completely avoid this risk, Diddy Boy has decided a different method, specimen cleaning. 
At the Varick Museum, you can clean specimens in hopes of getting experience slams. This method averages 1,700 to 1,800 Slayer experience per hour, which is about one-sixth of the experience per hour of the kill assist method. However, this method is more AFKable and can guarantee that you will stay at level 3. These facts, combined with Diddy Boy 1's mobile-only gameplay, seem to be the best fit for him. 88 Slayer has taken Diddy Boy over 2,500 hours. To get 99 Slayer, his method will take a projected 4,000 more hours for 6,500 total hours. Best of luck, man, and I can't wait to see you as the first level 3 with 99 Slayer in Old School RuneScape. Next on our countdown is a peer named UTC. UTC is 99991 with 99 hit points, ranged magic, and prayer. He's completely maxed at 2179 total level and has over 500 million total experience on his account. He sits at 101 combat. UTC says his biggest accomplishment to date is his Inferno Cape. Being one defense, any mistakes he made during the Inferno Cape run got exposed very quickly. Therefore, he needed a perfect strategy and perfect execution to be successful. After many attempts, he finally got the cape in January of 2019. UTC also has 12 pets in game, including the Prince Black Dragon, Jad, Kraken, Thermi, Rock Golem, Hell Puppy, Rift Guardian, Beaver, Huron, Pet Rocky, Chaos Elemental, and Scorpius Offspring. Coincidentally, it took him 30.6 million experience each to get both the runecrafting and thieving pets. His beaver took him even more experience, 37.6 million, so those three pets alone required over 30 million experience each. On the flip side, he got three mining pets and just 15 million mining experience. His future goals include finishing off all Slayer pets, he just has the Hydra, the Abyssal Orphan from Sire, and Noon from Grotesque Guardians left. After completing the Slayer pets, UTC wants to get all Wilderness pets and also the Corporal Beast pet. Finally, he wants to get max quest points on his account. UTC also has a maxed main named Krista, a Zerker named Concert with almost 2100 total level, and a med named Haram with over 2000 total level. I could probably talk about these accounts as well, but let's say we did and just move on. Of course, how couldn't I end the season finale without featuring Rendy and Exact's 3 combat fire cape? I know I've covered several of their previous fire capes already, so I'll be brief. I do have a full evolution of the fight caves video if you want to watch it more in detail. On January 14th, 2020, Rendy and Exact jointly released a level 3 fire cape completion. Their method involves several out of the box strategies that they used for previous records. Among the most important methods was the unlimited ring of recoil effect by using the ring of suffering on noted recoils, combo tick eating to survive the 90s and 360s from far distances, and a new discovery in the level 3 video, melee tick eating the 180s. Melee tick eating the 180s was done by using the elemental shield with a prayer interface stall. This, in combination with positioning another NPC nearby, would coordinate the 180s attacks to heal a nearby NPC before itself, essentially solving the 180 heal problem. This method was first discovered by Kemp Q. Melee tick eating the 180s took between 1 and 1.5 and hours per kill. They did this for 12 kills. Although this method was time consuming, it allowed Rendy and Exact to not have to flinch the 180s with the Iron Spear until an inflicted poison, which saved enough melee experience to conquer the level 3 fire cape. 